Irvin McDaniel Jr. plays the djembe drum on a street in Charleston. It's a sound that would have been familiar to enslaved Africans in the city. On the east coast of the United States, over 40% of them passed through Charleston's port, the largest point of disembarkation in North America during the transatlantic slave trade. And they live, they work, they die, and now they be remembered forever. They're part of me because, you know, Africa flows to me. He'll be representing one of the people whose remains were uncovered in the city. These hands is sort of celebrating, you know, the ancestors by playing a rhythm and playing a tune. This plaque marks the spot where in 2013, construction workers digging foundations uncovered the unmarked grave of 36 people of African descent. They were buried in the late 1700s and were most likely enslaved. Scientists are now using their DNA to tell their stories. This is a way of restoring dignity to individuals that should have always had this dignity all along. The chemical signatures of the bone indicated that six individuals were likely born in Africa and the rest of the individuals were likely born outside of Africa in Charleston or in North America. While there are lots of reminders of the region's slave history, many of their narratives have been lost to time. But on this former slave plantation on James Island near Charleston, their stories are being told. It was common during the times of enslavement for as many as 10 to 20 people to occupy a space this size. Now, 36 people living in the area, including McDaniel, are serving as models, their hands to be cast in bronze to represent each of the ancestors. They will become part of a memorial fountain at the site in Anson Street. One loving thing about this whole project is they're just family. We are just all family of the 36 ancestors, and that their story is our story. This site in 2019. Lina, Lina, Lisa, Lisa, Pele, Pele. The ancestors' remains were reburied during a traditional Yoruba naming ceremony.